Hi everyone, I'm Chris and welcome back to the lecture on decision trees of this machine learning course. This section is about the most important hyperparameters of decision trees. So far, we've seen the idea and the model structure of a decision tree. Further, we learned how to use the Gini impurity to find the best splits. The data can be splitted and splitted. But the question is, how many splits are appropriate for our dataset? Is it necessary to split until every single data point of the given training data is correctly classified? We might run into overfitting. Consider the example on the right side. The classification problem shown here has two different classes represented by the light blue and the dark blue dots. Three data points, encircled in green, are selected as test data to estimate the quality of the classification. The rest of the data is used as training data to build the decision tree. Most of the training data can be classified correctly with a single split at about x1 is equal to 3.5. On the right half, we have the light blue dots. On the left half, we have the dark blue dots. However, there is a single outlier, a single light blue dot among the dark blue dots. Now, if some more splits are performed, even the single outlier is isolated. This leads to a training accuracy of 100%, so every data point of the training data is classified correctly. On the test data, the data points on the right are classified correctly as well. However, data points near the outlier are classified incorrectly. So here, our dark blue data point of the test data is misclassified. It is the same area than the single light blue data point of the training data. A decision tree with a single split at x1 is equal to 3.5 would give a training accuracy slightly below 100%. The outlier on the left is not classified correctly. But the test accuracy is 100% if we classify according to the most frequent class in the training data. Of course, this is a simple example with only a few data points and just a test data set instead of using cross-validation for model evaluation. But it shows that we need to control the conditions for a split to prevent overfitting of a decision tree on the training data. There are several possibilities to control the conditions for a split. This is done by specifying hyperparameters of the algorithm. The first one is the maximum depth of the decision tree. This hyperparameter limits the number of possible successive splits. So if the maximum tree depth is 2, the decision tree can perform a first split. Further, on each half another split can be performed if necessary. But that's it. No more split can be done. The next hyperparameter is the minimum number of data points for a split. So here you can limit the conditions for a split directly. There has to be a sufficient number of data points to perform a split. For example, we can set this number to 10. In our example, you can see that on the right side of the tree, another split might give better training accuracy. However, the number of data points is 7 at this node. Consequently, no further split is considered. Another hyperparameter is the minimum number of data points at the leaf after a split. So a split must give a leaf node with more than this number of data points. These hyperparameters are directly related to the conditions of performing a split. 
There is another important hyperparameter, which is especially important to control the computational costs. So far, we implicitly assume to consider splits with respect to all input variables. However, especially if a lot of input variables are present, it is a valid approach to limit this. A hyperparameter to control the number of variables considered at a specific node for the local optimization can be specified. For the CART algorithm, the variables considered at a node for a split are usually selected at random. This is true even if all variables are considered. If two splits for different variables lead to the same minimal costs, one of them is randomly picked. This is because the variables are considered at random. So it seems a good idea to specify a seed value for reproducible results. So there are several different hyperparameters for a decision tree. We can use cross-validation to find the best choice of the hyperparameters for our data. It should be noted that decision trees consider splits with respect to a single input variable at a time. Consequently, the variables do not mix. This is why we don't need to normalize the data for the training of a decision tree. Last but not least, it should also be mentioned that decision trees provide estimations which are easy to understand and to interpret. The basic structure of yes-no questions of decision trees give transparent decisions easy to trace back. Section finished and lecture finished. In this lecture we considered the decision tree algorithm. The idea is to divide the input space into regions of a specific class. The splits are chosen by a local optimization strategy. The local cost function uses a Gini impurity to evaluate the separation quality of the split. Finally, we learned about the hyperparameters to control when to stop splitting. In the next lecture, we will consider neural networks. So, thank you for listening. If you like this video, please click the like button and consider to subscribe the channel. If you have any further comments or questions, please leave a comment down below. So thanks again and see you in the next lecture.